Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Lamont Tyson, host of Life Games Channel, doing my second review of Black Panther 2 Wakanda Forever, and I got my number one roadie for these movies, the homie James, the bookman Booker. James, how you doing tonight? I'm doing all right. I enjoyed myself, and yeah, it was... I don't know where to start. Well, I'll, that's what you got me here for. Uh, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've seen it already, and you guys saw me last night live giving you my hot takes on what I like, what I didn't like. I'm going to say what I like and didn't like for James after he tells us what he liked and what he didn't like to see if they match up with what I said. He didn't watch us last night. So here we go with James's take. And I'll just start by going this way, James. Tell me everything you liked about the movie from the acting, the soundtrack, the visuals, um, the story development, lack of story development. Tell me everything that you like first. Right off, the acting was fantastic. I, everybody brought their A game. Mm -hmm. Even the times where characters had like a really hokey line, delivered it great. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have complaints about anybody who was in this movie Casting was fantastic again, and I can't say enough good stuff about the acting. The visuals. Okay. I'm going to give it a 99%. There were a few quick brief scenes where I said, this looks a little bit like Avatar. Like, uh -oh. you, could have, you could have ripped a brief moment out of Avatar, stuck it in this movie, and said, it's the same thing. The underwater scenes. I know underwater is really hard to do and make it look realistic. It wasn't distractingly bad at any point. It was just a few moments where it was like, I, we've had 10 years to improve on underwater scenes and we just haven't done it yet. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm nitpicking. In, in a very long movie, there were some brief moments where I said, ah, it was a little cartoony, but nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. uh, Storyline-wise, mm -hmm. you know, this would have been a thankless task to make a movie out of. Uh, consider what they had to build off of. How beloved the first movie was. How well done the first movie was. Look at where the storyline for that left off. And then you have to go in a completely different direction. And everybody is waiting to see how are you going to handle this. There, it would be, this was a Herculean task mm -hmm. to create a follow-up movie considering everything that has happened. I can't, I can't come up with a way they could have done a better job. There were moments where I said, this isn't how I would have done it. Hey, I can tell you how they could have done a better job. Please. Recast T'Challa. That is a can of worms I'm not going <laughs> to open for anything in the world. Uh, you know, there are... <laughs> I can tell you another way they could have done better. Yes. Not kill the Queen Mother. That one I also questioned. I get why they went that way and things i don't know did the actress say after this i'm done she did okay so she did. you know their their hands may have been tied on that the thing that stuck out to me storyline wise was you know we spent much of the movie uh just mourning the death of takala mm -hmm. then we spend the end of the movie mourning the death of the queen mm -hmm. and then i think about didn't the queen has a, had a have a husband at one point? Didn't Takala have a father? Yeah. And how much time in total did we spend mourning his death in all of the movies since then? The, minutes? Uh, minutes, few minutes. Uh, we, we saw him in the ancestral plane in the first one. and But, you know, a year later, they weren't burning robes and still mourning and figuring out how are we going to go on without our king, who was our king for many many years well they had the secession plan in place for that king they didn't have a secession plan really in place for oh, king t'challa absolutely it was just there was a there was a profound sadness and a profound how do we move on mm -hmm. that they just didn't have for a king that we know they had for a very long time mm -hmm. and i get that's not what this movie was about just like in that one that it's not what those movies were about it was just it was sort of a they barely mentioned him not long after he passed. And here we are, these characters are a year later, still barely able to move on, which worked great for this movie. It was just one of those nitpicky things that stuck out storyline-wise, where I said, it doesn't match what you did in the past, but also you didn't have a reason to do that in the past. So, How did you feel about the introduction of Namor as a mutant? And did you like the way they sprinkle him in as a new antagonist? I like him. Mm -hmm. I like the way they used him. All right, he was the one where I said some of the visuals on how he flies 
were a little bit, you know, it was, I was supposed to be taking it very seriously. And I kind of chuckled a little bit because he kind of, you know, <laughs> he would kind of float for a second and then, you know, do a stairway do a, to heaven type yep, thing. He'd do a zoomy and go up on another person. It was kind of like that. That was kind of funny. I wish he flew more like Superman because nobody laughs when Superman flies. With this guy, he zips along and then he stops and kind of floats in the air with his little wings on his feet flapping. And you kind of chuckle a little. But I, in comic books, He's the it's, you see it, but I, it's one of those things that when they drew it for a comic book, I don't think they were thinking, what's it going to look like when we have to make this, you oh. know, real life looking? Mm -hmm. So having little wings on your feet flutter, it's fine for a comic book, doesn't work quite as well for a live action movie. Well, if you had to have a fight right now between DC's Aquaman, live action Aquaman, Aquaman. and Marvel's, <laughs> Marvel's... Namor, which one are you taking? All right, one on one fight. Yep. Obviously, Namor is going to win. I, I, okay. I let me throw that out there. Okay. But when we're talking about the character overall, I would rather read an Aquaman any day. Okay. Make Aquaman okay. a bad guy. Throw him in this perfect. I would rather read, watch, see Aquaman any day. Okay. Namor, he's fine in the comics, but I don't think when he was created, he was meant for live action. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with it. That being said, again, I have no complaints about the actor. Right. I can't... He killed it. He did. And, you know, if you had to make it live action, I don't know how you could do it any better. Right. The way he would fly, it was kind of, gave me a chuckle at times where it wasn't supposed to, but he, now see, he we, did great. I was completely invested in Namor's, um, his his motivations. I was completely... Yes. I was invested. They, they got he, that down. He, he was convincing. He was menacing. And he done like all evil people do when they want to convince someone to do something peacefully. You bring one of them to your homeland, offer them gifts and shit, put them in your... Why, why does the bad guy always want to make the people wear their clothes in their house? James, you come to my house all the time. Do I ever say, James, take your clothes off and put on this fucking robe? I, I appreciate that you have never you. done that. Never, like, never, I, never. But for never some, even occurred to me that you no, might. So. No, but for some reason, these bad guys love to do that, and they more done that, and... Ultimately, that was one of his downfalls by giving up the the wrist necklace that he had got from his mama. That was ultimately led to his downfall. Yes, I I get it from the standpoint of you're trying to show and they're trying they're trying to show the audience we're going to accept this person as one of us, mm -hmm. but in return they have to serve us because they are one of us. Yes. And inevitably yes. the hero always turns it down after initially, you know, I don't want to insult them, so I'll wear the clothes. Then they turn it down. It it very it's a stereotype from a lot of movies and they did it fine. Mm -hmm. There was nothing actually wrong with it. It was it's what they needed to it's do for no, us. the normal. Okay. So we've talked a lot about what you like. Talk to me about what you didn't like, and this is where I might liven up the conversation. Um, Siri becoming Black Panther. Mm -hmm. It makes sense storyline wise. I'm, you know, they were put in a bad position where they had to choose a new Black Panther, and do you really want to just introduce a random new character and say you're it? Probably not. That would be unearned, which was the problem with putting it on her was. You know, think of everything Takala had to go to before we get to the end of the movie where we can say, truly, he is the king, yes. and he is the Black Panther, right. and he is the protector. Right. It felt unearned when she got it. Okay. Like, she created the solution to become Black Panther, whereas all the previous ones really had to earn it. And I'm not saying she didn't go through some terrible things to she, get there. She did. Her journey to get there was rough. But Takala had to fight to the death twice. Yeah. After losing his father to get, you know, like, it felt it felt unearned by her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And for her to got the crown that quickly, she has no fighting background. All of a sudden, she's out there doing backflips and sonic booms and shit, looking like Goku in a Black Panther suit. Yes. It, now I and I appreciate that she didn't have an easy win over Namor, but it was so quick yeah. that it felt like it was easy. Most of that battle he was realistically winning, mm -hmm. but they ended it so quickly that it felt like she won easily, which wasn't the case. But they didn't give enough time to that fight or any of her other. Did she have any other fights? Now that I'm saying that out loud, no, no. Okay, that was no, the only one. No. 
The one-on-one -on -one battles are always the better ones, but I guess that was the only one she had. It it just felt unearned for her to be the Black Panther. There are other there are even other minor characters in it that worked harder to get what she got just by sciencing it up. One thing that I thought was weird, Black Panther just came here and helped you save the entire planet from Thanos. Yeah. And no, none of the other Avengers and none of them other folks could bring their ass to his funeral. That feels, there's a lot of movies where it always feels like, in all the Spider-Man movies, it's like, if any other member of the Avengers would just show up, all the issues could be solved in a matter of minutes, that's a good if point. not less. Right. And that's been an ongoing problem with a lot of the Marvel movies. When, when it's not a group effort, when it's just one, this is this guy's movie, and it's like, if you had brought any other member of the Avengers with you, this or Doctor Strange, or something, mm -hmm. like, it would have already been finished. But okay, right. let, let's... Let's pretend like they don't exist or they're out having lunch right now. Here's what would have happened. Now, is it just me or did it feel like there was no point in having Val and Ross in the movie? Especially Val if you're not going to do anything with the Thunderbolts. Because the whole movie, I'm thinking either the post credit is going to be her and Abomination or any other member of the Thunderbolts. Or she was going to send someone from the Thunderbolts out to try to figure out what the hell is going on. Thinking that it was Wakanda, but she really knew that it was Namor. There, it was a subplot that didn't really have a satisfying ending. It just kind of stopped. And, and yes, they rescued him, but it, it was sort of a... That was a profound waste of time that you could have cut just about all those scenes and it would have had virtually no effect on the rest of the movie. Mm -hmm. Um it didn't feel out of place while you're watching it. It felt more out of place once you leave the theater and realize, well, that didn't really help the movie much. That kind of, that was sort of a lot of pointlessness. So mm -hmm. I didn't mind it while I was watching it. I minded it after we left. Another thing that I felt like they, and now people told me I used too strong of a language. I didn't say that they done this to him, oh, but I said they was right off. You they, don't even have to finish this. They, I know who you're going they to. They was borderline about to emasculate M'Baku, but I won't say they completely emasculated him. I say they chopped off one of his nuts. How did you feel about the way they portrayed M'Baku in this? In this, He was comic relief to some degree. He but was, Here's the thing. In the first one, yes, you laughed at some of the things he said and did in the first one. Right. But he wasn't comic relief. It was... In that one, he could create a funny situation because he was so confident and he could back it up that if he made fun of somebody to their face, legitimately that person was going to be scared. I mean, mm -hmm. he wasn't comic relief. He was so overpowered feeling that it was like, you know, he could make jokes and you wouldn't dare not laugh. With this one, it was strictly humor. You know, the one or two times he got into a fight, he... He lost pretty readily. I, he, it, this one was strictly he was comic relief, not he was the great big guy who could say whatever he wanted and nobody was going to touch him, so you had to laugh. You know, yeah. He could make fun of characters to their face in the first one, and you would laugh because they weren't going to do anything. Mm -hmm. With this one, nope, just slapstick comedy. Yeah, and he was used as a, a kind of a pedestal for Shuri to yeah. lean on a little bit. You know, a kickstand to a bike type situation, Numbaku. And, and it would make sense for him to be somewhat of a mentor to her because he was so close to her brother at one point. Mm -hmm. uh, but what did he actually teach her in this one? You know, like... Not much. Right. She, Not much. He was telling her about the family that... She knew her family, uh, most of her family, as we found out at the end. But, you know, it was like he was telling her things that she kind of already knew because she grew up with her brother. She has a rough idea what he was like. Mm. How do you feel about them introducing Riri uh, Ironheart and her Iron Man suit? I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> I, I, it completely nerfs. All the Iron Man movies, here you had Iron Man, you know, one of the smartest men alive, who built dozens of suits trying to get them better and better and better. And, you know, grew up in a scientific home. He had access to all the materials, all that. She whips one up that's even better than all of his models combined. 
just like that. It, it, it made all the previous Iron Man movies being one of those, what are you doing, man? Are you just phoning it in? Because this, this girl created something much better her first time out. Well, here's the thing. In the comics, she is smarter than Iron Man. Certainly. And also, has Iron Man ever been privileged to have Wakandian tech? No, but he does have billions of dollars to spend to develop this stuff. Right. You know, she may have the tech, but then she just she's able to just get the materials and just build it. And it's more so, it's not like we heard, boy, she blew up the first 25 ones she built. This is like the first time she built her very first suit using this technology that most of the world doesn't have access to, including herself mm -hmm. at that point, she built an even better suit. And it just sort of, it felt like it, it nerfed all the previous Iron Man suits, which is to say what they did in this movie was so good, you kind of went, ah, I wish they'd done that with Iron Man. Uh... I felt like there was. I felt like we didn't need Riri in this movie. No. You had one scientist already in Shuri. Yeah. I felt like you could have used Ross as the plot device to seek out and pit Wakanda versus Tolkien, which would have flowed a lot better from the first movie. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. not the way they went, and there might be. They may have a good reason for not doing it that way, that they're already thinking ahead to the next movie or TV series. You but they didn't indicate that. She's going to be in probably Young Avengers. Certainly. Along with um, T'Challa, Prince T'Challa now, yep. um, Toussaint, which is... Um, one yeah, of the... do you want to take that one? <laughs> oh, two, two... so how did you feel about them introducing at the very end in the post credit scene Toussaint, Shuri's nephew? I understand mm -hmm. but it was sort of the moment the moment that scene is done and it goes dark you kind of think to yourself what the hell was that <laughs> i think there's that... absolutely nothing leading to that moment well, except that it it exists it was know? a surprise yes and i think maybe marvel threw that in there to say to us people cl calling for recast the child that we hear you and this is a way we might do it we might have him grow up and be t'challa or we're going to have him in the Young Avengers so that you guys that fill in that void for Prince T'Challa. I mean, for King T'Challa, you got Prince T'Challa. Yeah. It was... I, there was nothing specifically wrong with it. Okay. I, I just... It was very much uh, out of nowhere, and you, you just had to sit all the way through it to figure out, where are they going with this? And even after it was over, it's sort of the... so. Now that we know this, where are you going with this? Yeah, uh, yeah, we got to know. We want to know where we're going and, uh, with that. And how long are we going to have to wait for that? Right. So, so um, is he going to be a feature character in the next? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess we'll see. You know, that Young Avengers team is starting to be formed. You can have him. You got Ironheart. You got Isaiah Bradley Grinson from yeah. the TV series. I mean, it's starting to heat up but it's i'll get together. you i'll get you out of here on this one man because i know you, right. know you got things to do you have a family and we're grateful to have guests come on yep. my show and give their opinions i appreciate it between the first black panther and the second one which one do you like the most as i watched this i kept thinking how much i liked the first one and wanted to watch the first one again okay. i don't regret seeing this one not a waste of time or anything no, it's worth going to see worth going to see in the theaters i still like the first one more Nothing wrong with that. That's not to say anything wrong with this one. It's just I came to appreciate why and how much I liked the first one. How would you? What would be your rating for this movie? Scale of zero to ten. What would you rate this movie? It was a good movie. It was a good movie. Definitely. It, I, I'm not going to go great. I'm not going to go fantastic. True. I'm not going to say top five. Right. It was a good movie. It was a good movie. I I I give it an eight. I, okay. I don't have any real complaints about it. I really don't. I'd okay. give it an eight. You know what a lot of dudes have a complaint with? They what? feel like Marvel is moving to the M-C-U. M-S-E-H-E-U. That's what dudes is complaining about online. I could, after this movie, I could see why someone would say that. I am not going to worry about that yet. Because, you know, look at the last few movies. A Spider-Man, a Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. Look at the very next one coming out. It's going to be an Ant-Man. So 
I, 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 I'm not going to go, I'm not going to say it's gone that far yet. No, no, I wouldn't say that, but they did do my man in Baku wrong. Oh, yeah, 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 no, they, that was. They, they they straight got him good. No, they could, they, you could do so much with him before this movie. And now after this movie, it's sort of like, he's comic relief. All right. <laughs> we, oh, man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this video. The movie is good. It's worth going it seeing. Is. It is. Maybe not going seeing two and three and four times like the first one, but it's definitely an experience. People, yeah. We had people in our theater clapping and tearing up, and we had people of all ages. I walked out a lady who was 90 years old. My two um, gr grandmothers, 92 years old. Yeah. So I walked her out. She enjoyed it. She was in tears. Then we had people that was five years old. So... Definitely a good time. I encourage you to go see it. Any parting words you'd like to say, James, about the direction of the MCU after this movie? I They were put in a position that no one should envy. You know, the way this movie had to come about, there was no great, perfect way. Like, obviously, we have to do this with Black Panther next. No, they were, they were given a really bad situation to try to fix. They did a fine job. I there it, There was no perfect way to do it. Considering we had, you know, we had to move on from T'Challa, there was there was no winning way to do it. They really did fine, you know. Yeah, they did all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen it, this is one of our spoiler yep. reviews. Make sure you go see it. Um, great villain, great soundtrack, yeah. great visuals, great costumes, great acting. Just one or two plot holes that they could have fixed to keep <laughs> the movie from being two hours and 40 fucking minutes long. But other than that, I give it a 7. James gives it an 8. Until that next Sexy as Hell, Marvel, a great movie that me and James will review. We'll see you guys.